Welcome to part one of the Windows Flutter installation instructions, which hopefully means that you have a PC running Windows 7 or later. These are some of the minimum requirements that you'll need to get started installing Flutter, including having at least 400 megabytes of free disk space, but practically speaking, you'll actually want more. Although Flutter only requires 400 megabytes as a minimum requirement, you'll want at least 10 gigabytes free on your hard disk because you'll also have to install Android Studio as well as virtual devices like the Android emulator. Finally, you'll also need to have a program called Git installed. Now, don't worry if you don't or you don't know if you do, we're going to check it together and we're going to do the installation together. So first things first, you're going to need the Flutter SDK and you can get this as well as all the step-by-step -step installation instructions from flutter.dev slash docs slash get started. Now, once you're here, you're going to choose the Windows track and an important note to notice is that if you are based in China where the Google servers are disabled, make sure you head over here where you'll find that the Flutter community has set up mirrors for all of the downloads that you'll need to get Flutter up and running so that all the download links will work even if you're based in China. All right, so let's go ahead into the Windows installation instructions. Now, at this point, if you don't have Git installed, be sure to click on this link, Git for Windows, and it will take you to a page that will automatically start downloading Git for your system. And once it's complete, double click on the file and it will start installing it onto your Windows system. Now, this has a really simple setup wizard and you basically just click next and keep all of the default requirements and keep going until you get to the end. Once that's done, then we're ready to start downloading the Flutter SDK. This is going to contain all the code that we'll need to be able to start developing Flutter apps. Now, once you're ready, click on this big blue button and you should download the Flutter for Windows zip file. Now, once download is finished, go ahead and open up the zip file and you'll need to click on extract all. Now, the place that we're going to extract it to is really important. Flutter recommends putting it in a file path that's directly in the C drive, for example, slash source slash Flutter. Now, it's really important that you don't put this in something like C slash program files, which requires special access privileges. We want all users to be able to access this Flutter folder. So once you're done, go ahead and select show extracted files when complete and extract it to that location. Now, it's going to take a while to complete, but once it's done, it should open up inside our source slash Flutter and then you've got Flutter installed onto your system and you can start running Flutter commands by locating the file called flutter underscore console dot bat. Double click on it. And when you do this, you might encounter a Windows protected your PC pop up. And if you do go ahead and click on more info and go ahead and click on run anyways. And this will open up the command prompt in Windows and you can start typing Flutter commands such as Flutter dash dash version. And it will tell you that you've got Flutter 1.2.1 currently installed on your system. But as it is, we can only use Flutter from the command prompt. It knows how to locate the Flutter package. But if we want to use it from somewhere else, say Android Studio, or if we just opened up a normal Windows command prompt, then we'll need to tell it where this Flutter package is located. So to prevent having to do that every single time, we're going to set our path variable. So if you head into start and you search for env, then you should see a link to edit environment variables for your account. So that's what we're going to click on. And over here, under the user variables, check to see if there's an entry called path. And I can see it right here. Once you've found it, go ahead and select it and click on edit. And inside this variable value, 
navigate all the way to the end of what currently exists. And then you're going to add the full path to our flutter slash bin. So if you go over here, you can see that there is the bin folder right here. And the way to navigate to it is C slash source slash flutter slash flutter again slash bin. So that's what we're going to add to our path. All the way at the very end, we're going to add a semicolon and then you're going to type the path to locate that bin folder. So in my case, it's going to be C colon backslash src backslash flutter backslash flutter and backslash bin and check to make sure that you don't have any errors in there and then go ahead and click OK to add the path variable. Now, if you don't have a user variable called path, then you can simply go ahead and create a new one that's called path P-A-T-H with all caps and then put in that variable value as the location of that bin folder that we typed in just now. Once you're done, go ahead and click OK, and you should now be able to run Flutter from anywhere. So for example, I could simply open up command prompt from start, and I should be able to type Flutter dash dash version. And it should confirm to me that I have Flutter 1.2.1 installed on my current system. Now, another really helpful console command is Flutter Doctor. And it will diagnose to see how our Flutter is set up and if there are any other things that we still need to sort out before we can continue. So you can see that in this checklist, we've got Flutter set up and ready to go. We've got a little check mark, but for everything else, including Android Studio, Android Toolchain, and any connected devices, all of these have a exclamation mark. So that's what we're going to address in the next lesson. We're going to install Android Studio and get set up for Android development. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.